In this video, we're going to present the general combined nonlinear kinematic and isotropic hardening model that is capable of modeling the Boschinger effect. There are many different mathematical models that exist in the literature that are capable to simulate this behavior. In this video and in our online notes, we will be presenting the armstrong frederick law that is also implemented in a variety of commercial finite element analysis software. I will start by reminding you uh, with the Boschinger effect. Metals that do not exhibit the Boschinger effect maintain a yield stress in tension that's equal to the yield stress in compression, as shown in the left curve. Metals that exhibit the Boschinger effect, as shown on the right curve, after applying some plastic deformation in the tensile direction, would have a yield stress in compression that's usually smaller than that in tension. The main idea for the model is to imagine a center for the yield surface as depicted by the red line shown on the right curve. This red line divides the distance between the point representing the yield in tension and the point representing the yield in compression. So this distance from this point to the red line is equal to the distance between the red line and the yield stress in compression. The equation describing the center of the yield surface is traditionally denoted by the variable alpha, alpha and is termed the back stress. The material model requires identification of two curves. The first curve defines the equation of alpha or the back stress. The other equation defines the value of sigma yield alpha, which gives the distance between the back stress and the yield stress. These curves could be linear or nonlinear as a function of the equivalent plastic string. In this video, we will present the Armstrong Frederick nonlinear law to describe alpha. Any other law can be used for sigma yield alpha. In the principal components 3D vector space, this model is represented by the same von Mises cylinder except that its axis moves in the stress space parallel to the line sigma 1 equals sigma 2 equals sigma 3. The term kinematic hardening is used to imply this movement of the cylinder. The radius of the cylinder is still equal to square root 2 over square root of 3 multiplied by the uh, size of the yield surface. The size of the yield surface is defined using sigma y alpha. So the radius here is equal to the square root of 2 over 3 multiplied by sigma uh, yield alpha. What is required for this model is the two relationships, sigma uh, yield alpha versus the equivalent plastic strain, and also the relationship between alpha and the equivalent plastic strain. And in because we're doing a 3D, uh, a general 3D loading, case we also need the relationship between the center of the yield uh, space or the components of the back stress tensor and the equivalent plastic strain. Armstrong Frederick proposed an exponential law in which alpha or alpha bar it, which appears here is equal to a constant this constant is equal to c over gamma multiplied by 1 minus uh, e power negative gamma multiplied by the equivalent plastic strain. This model is based on many experimental observations which we are not presenting here. But one advantage of this model over previous models is that this model predicts a maximum alpha equal to c over gamma. Once epsilon p, as epsilon p goes, or the equivalent plastic strain goes to infinity, this goes to zero and alpha goes to c over gamma. The rate of change of alpha, when we take the derivative of this with, res uh, uh, with respect to t, so we get alpha dot. The only variable that changes is the equivalent plastic strain. When we take the derivative, we are going to get the two terms, c multiplied by the equivalent plastic strain dot minus alpha bar um, gamma multiplied by uh, epsilon, uh, the equivalent plastic strain dot. 
The first term in this rate equation is similar to what is referred to in the literature as Ziegler's law, while the second term is the modification that prevents the limitless increase of alpha. The yield function in a, in a uniaxial state of stress is given by the difference between sigma on 1 and the yield stress. The yield stress is given as the sum of the center of the yield surface and sigma y alpha. So we compare sigma on 1 with sigma yield and sigma yield is equal to sigma y alpha plus this alpha. In a three-dimensional uh, general loading state, the yield function is defined by the von Mises cylinder, whose center is given by alpha. So mathematically, this is represented by the von Mises stress. Evaluated, instead of evaluated at the value of the stress, we evaluated it at sigma minus alpha. And the von Mises stress is then um, compared with the value of sigma y alpha, or the size of the yield surface. Uh, sigma von Mises evaluated at sigma minus alpha can also be uh, evaluated or, uh, or written in terms of the deviatoric stress component and the deviatoric components of the back stress tensor. The evolution of the center of the yield surface in 3D space is given by the 3D version of the armstrong frederick law given by the equation here. In this equation, the increment of alpha ij is related to the, inc uh, the increment in the equivalent plastic screen using the constant c and gamma, and the other stress components. The associated flow rule is still used with substituting with the new yield surface or the new yield function. And in this case, the derivative of the yield function with respect to sigma ij is equal to 3 over 2 sij divided by the sigma von Mises, but minus the deviatory components of the um, back stress tensor. The consistency condition can be applied similar to the isotropic hardening model, with the addition of the terms related to the increments in the back stress. Note that the derivatives of the yield function with respect to sigma ig and alpha ig are negative of each other, and the expression is given right here. In the next video, I will provide an example in which this material model is used with a constant value for sigma y alpha.